So one of the things that the environment stages exposed was the idea of having multiple cameras in your scene. You don't need environment stages to do that. You can do that all on your own. Um, to create a camera, you simply can just, um, all, basically all of your camera controls are right up here at the top. Um, you can hover over this camera icon with a little plus logo all way. And that will, if I click that, that'll simply create a camera in the exact location that I'm viewing through at that point. And you can control the camera the same way you can your normal viewer. So just by tumbling around with the all the left mouse button, uh, I can move the camera around the scene. Now that I have the camera selected, I also get some additional controls over here on the left hand side, sorry, the right hand side of the screen. Uh, the most obvious one is the focal length. I can uh, zoom in and zoom out of my, um, of my, with my camera and create like, you know, lens distortion effect. So if you go like super wide angle, it's that kind of fisheye lens. If you go super telephoto, it will be kind of the opposite and, and make things, uh, it'll condense the space down a little bit. Um, that's really nice because I know that like with product lighting shots, you know, you'll often use um, more telephoto lens with architecture stuff, you use wide angle lens to make the space feel bigger. So that's really good. You also have your out output resolution. So within this, I can, you know, by default, it's 1920 by 1080, just kind of that, that classic kind of 2K look, that TV image look. But if I was, you know, making something for social media and I wanted a square format, I could do that. I could also flip it and do a vertical orientation as well. Really whatever you want there. Um, we also have a depth of field control, which is really nice. Let me go and turn off the Oh, this, this is a little lock that locks that aspect ratio. So I'm just gonna make this square for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the ray tracer. And what we have also is our depth of field control. So when I have just the real time rendering on and I activate this, you won't see anything happen at all. Um, instead, you have to activate your ray tracer. And in order to utilize the depth of field, you just, Start with the set focal point button. So I'll click this, drag it into the scene, you go over to the scene, don't drag, just click, move over here. And if I wanted to focus in on this, this logo here on the side, I would just click on that. And now that's what's in focus. You also get this blur amount. So if I really wanted to make that out of focus, I can. And now that I have that in place, um, that focus will remain on that part of the image. You can see that, um, that icon kind of sticks there and I can really kind of zero in on that. It's really nice when you're uh, photographing small things and you just like really want to focus in on one area of it. Um, you can see how that would be really beneficial. So it allows me to just like focus in on some detailed shots of that. So that's pretty much it. You're not limited to making one. You know, you can make um, multiple cameras for your scene. I'm going, you know, if I wanted this one at that aspect ratio and I wanted, you know, just like a more traditional one, but this one's actually going to be a uh, kind of a fisheye lens. I could really kind of zoom in there, make it feel like it's, you know, like the size of a building. I could do that. And then this, this little dialogue or this little drop down menu allows me to switch between the cameras. I could also use the, it's the, very upper left hand button here. It's like, it's also, it's the tilde button. I actually don't know what it's called. I'll put it on the screen so you can see, but if I, um, if I hit that button, I can toggle back and forth between the camera that I'm looking at and kind of my work camera. Why that's beneficial is that like, once you get, like, let's say I get this camera locked in exactly where I want, but I need to back out because I need to change the lighting or look at another part of the, um, uh, uh, the, the, the headphones. I can do that without, uh, changing the position that and even if I did like say I was back in here and I did move this and I was like oh man I didn't mean to move that we have this this button here that returns it it's a camera it's called the camera undo button and that will return it back to the position that it was just in oh then you got this button here that'll uh frame the selection which you guys already know so if I wanted to kind of frame it in on that I could do that as well okay oh so one final thing I forgot to show you with the camera is the dolly zoo so this is really cool so you've got this uh the dolly uh, button over here to the side. If I hold this down, you can see there's also Dolly Zoo, uh, which you can activate by hitting the number seven. Uh, and then what you can do is with this activated, you can, if I pull back, it'll, it's like that vertigo effect or the Jaws shot, where basically it's trying to keep your object the same size in the frame, but it's adjusting the focal length and the position of the camera at the exact same time to kind of give that effect. So if you're like, 
you know what? I really like the positioning of this of, of the object in the scene, but I just want it to be a little bit more telephoto. I can use this just to kind of um, push it down in a little bit. So now it like moves the camera back, zooms in a little bit more, condenses the perspective on it. And it's a pretty cool little feature there. So just one other thing I wanted to draw attention to. So that's it for the uh, camera adjustments there. Uh, you, uh, yeah, it, you can go crazy with it. Like I said, you can create multiple cameras when it comes time to rendering. You can render each one of those out, which is really beneficial. Um, and yeah, and we'll move on from there.